Happy New Year, everyone, from the Enkyoji Buddhist Network. I am here at our dojo in Ballard, Washington, and I am taking the time at this uh, this moment to send out greetings uh, before the new year arrives, uh, and also to be able to rededicate ourselves and to reconfirm what our mission is as Enkyoji Buddhist Network. This last year, uh, 2017, has been magnificent. We've grown so many sanghas. We've grown so many new practitioners of uh, our traditional Buddhism. And we're really excited about that. And that couldn't have been done without your help. Uh, as we understand in each and every Buddhism, all of us are leaders. Uh, and we do all have a mission. And that mission is to be able to uh, help others come into contact with Buddhism. Uh, and that when people are ready or interested to study Buddhism, that we can help facilitate that because Buddhism has been such a benefit to our lives. And that really is an important mission uh, because as we've seen in 2017, um, the question comes up many times, how do we change this world? How do we help heal this world? How do we make this world positive? How do we make beings uh, be able to find their true uh, capacity to their true uh, nature and I always come back to the same conclusion and that is Buddhism and especially the Lotus Sutra so therefore we are very lucky to be able to have found the Lotus Sutra and to be able to teach other people uh, every day I wake up and I, I experience that uh, amazement uh, the opportunities that uh, I have been given to change in my life and to be able to change other people's lives uh, through the Buddhist teaching. So therefore, uh, with this message, this is a message to Enkyoji Buddhist Network members, uh, leaders, shami, priests, everyone. And as the uh, leader of the Enkyoji Buddhist Network, I really wanted to focus uh, more this year because we've been growing so many sanghas. And the most important thing that we have to do is education. Education uh, is the backbone of us understanding and growing in our own practice through helping compassionately other people. So therefore, this year, I really would like to focus on three main points. And of course, we have so many points in our practice, but as a group, it is very important to understand that, as Nijin and Shonin said, uh, if people are of the same mind, uh, even if there are hundreds or thousands, if they are not of the same mind, they will surely fail. <coughs> but we as Enkyoji Buddhist Network have the same mind of mission. <coughs> and so I'm going to share with you these three uh, main points of focus that I would like for us to uh, concentrate on in the year 2018. The first one is a practice that's very important that when all of us come to our practice, and even if you are in the practice, I'm going to challenge you to do this. And the reason why is because in order to understand something, we have to do it over and over and over to understand the deep essence of something, to extract the essence, to inculcate it into our own bodies. We have to practice it. That's why in Shohoji Sosho, Nichiren and Shonin said, without learning and practicing, there's no Buddhism. So even if you have a great altar, even if you have all Buddhist implements, if you dress in Buddhist clothing, you call yourself a Buddhist, it means absolutely nothing if it doesn't benefit yourself or other beings. So therefore, it's essential that we take our responsibility to encourage and deepen our own practice, because without that, it's impossible to lead and support others. So therefore, I challenge you uh, with one Number one is a hundred incense sticks. What this means, and I challenge this to old members and new members, is that to chant, and this can be inched in the form of shodayo, but to chant 100 incense sticks. Now, there are a lot of incense size sticks, but the majority are of this size. This size is usually 20 minutes. Uh, they do vary, They do vary, but you would have to check them yourself. But you purchase a nice box of incense, such as this, and you make a vow. And our vows are done by writing them on a piece of paper, because just thinking in your mind, you'll forget it. 
The important thing about a vow is to, to put it on your altar and to every day rededicate yourself. That in order to deepen my practice, to, to deepen my understanding, I vow to do a hundred incense sticks of chanting. Now it seems like a lot, but actually it's not. The most important, the most difficult thing is disciplining yourself to uh, doing something that you said you would do. And it's important, and then especially if you are just coming to this practice, I encourage you to do this practice as best you can. Uh, and in this practice, you may have your ups and downs, but the important thing is fulfilling your vow. And by then you will be able to understand and experience Buddhism. Because when people come to me and say, hey, I want to learn Buddhism. How many books you read, or how many videos you watch, the only way to understand Buddhism is by smelling it, by tasting it, by experiencing it with your own life. If you don't do that, Buddhism has no meaning to you. It's only a cognitive concept, an intellectual concept. And, and we understand where that gets us in our lives. Absolutely nowhere. Because our minds are constantly changing and our mind itself as a uh, vessel uh, is quite crafty in allowing us to uh, be dissuaded by our desires and our attachments. So therefore, both to current and new members, including leaders, I encourage you to make a vow to do 100 incense sticks. Now you can do it as quickly or as slowly as possible. But once you're done with that, I would like you to share that with me. I'd like you to uh, share on our groups that you have accomplished that because that is also our accomplishment. And we're there chanting with you. So after you've completed that vow, please uh, send me a letter to the Seattle Dojo, to the Seattle Hombu Dojo, our head temple here uh, outside of Japan for Ankyoji uh, Buddhist Network. Send me that vow so I can give it to the Nichiren statue, Nichiren Shonen statue at our temple and show what a great practitioner. Uh, because, you know, the Buddha and Nichiren Shonen are uh, nourished by our practice, by our chanting. The Dharma is nourished. Is that That's what makes the Dharma eternal. Without us, there is no Buddha Dharma. There is no practice of the Lotus Sutra. So therefore, we as Bodhisattvas, our accomplishments, are so wonderful. So please share that with people. So therefore, that is the first one, is a 100 incense stick challenge. Uh, and this is a vow. It's not for my benefit. It's for yours. And that if you, I'm going to require this of people who are interested to study Nichiren Buddhism, to take this vow and to try to chant 100 incense sticks. Uh, you will find out a lot about yourself, your impatience, uh, your lack of discipline, many things you'll learn about. But this is what Buddhism is about, okay? Number two, home meetings. In Ankyoji Buddhist Network, we have temples. We also have small sanghas. But each of our members, and it's very important to realize this, each of our members are leaders in Ankyoji. We're not uh, passive temples where you come and you watch a performance and you feel as if you uh, have participated in Buddhism. No, this is not a uh, inactive uh, practice. This is a active practice, organic Buddhism, growing it in your life, growing it from the difficulties, all of the wonderful and uh, all the, the challenging mud of your life. I challenge each of you and would like each of you to at least have one home meeting this next year in 2018. What is a home meeting? Well, a home meeting is having a meeting and inviting either first either a priest. If you don't have a priest in your local area, you can invite a lay leader. You can also do it by uh, internet. So if you would like to hold a service at your home or a Dharma lecture with me, all you need to do is contact me and we will arrange it to hold it through Skype or whatever uh, service that you use. But why do we do this? Because most people think Buddhism is, a, is done in the temples where monks go to meditate and uh, priests wear fancy robes. 
But in actually, our Buddhism is different. Nichiren Buddhism has been grown by the laity. And what does that mean? Is that all of my research that I've been able to research shows that the majority of growth in Nichiren Shu Buddhism and Nichiren Buddhism in general was done by the contributions of the laity and priest working together. And what that means is that our laity, our educated, our laity have faith. And that faith encourages and supports and nourishes both the priest, the leaders, and the laity. That is what makes up the Sangha in Nichiren Buddhism. So as a lay person or as a leader, you can think, how can I contribute? Why, why do we do this? This is the next question. Why do we hold these home meetings? Because the Gohonzon, Mandala, Mandala Gohonzon, is nourished by our practice, nourished by our chants, nourished by our mission. And that will benefit the Gohonzon. And also, this is the greatest vow that a Bodhisattva can do, is allow people to hear the Dharma through the lecture. The other is the transfer of merit. That transfer of merit, both to yourself and ancestors and loved ones, will allow people to be benefited by your study and practice. And also your own merit of being able to fulfill the four great bodhisattva vows. That is to spread and teach Buddhism, whatever the difficulty may be. Also at this time, I encourage you, and we will be showing and sharing videos about how to do uh, what is called Dharma Club. Now, a Dharma Club is another way of being able to allow people to experience the Dharma without the ritualized, formalized uh, idea of meetings. But in this way, either through the Dharma Club or the home service with the minister, inviting the minister, you will be able to share the Dharma. Now, we will give information of how to do this. If you are interested, once again, please contact me. Please put it on our message boards. Please send me a message. Please give me a call. Please send me an email. Whatever it takes, send it and we will support you. Because in Kyoji Buddhist Network is growing and it's growing because of all of us and it's benefiting so many people that people are coming to me and sending emails and messages and calling me, telling me, about how their lives have been benefited by this, especially in this very tumultuous time that we live in where no one is providing any kind of teaching or answers to us. Okay? And number three, Ofuse, giving without the idea of receipt. Why do I bring this up? Because actually this has been uh, for myself a learning experience because I grew up uh, experiencing churches and TV preachers asking for money. And I, as a religious practitioner, never wanted to really associate it with myself with money. And also it made me feel as if money was in some way uh, against or um, in opposition to practice, spiritual practice. And we experience this a lot in the United States. But I'd like to tell you that all of the kindness and generous ofuse giving without the idea of receipt to the mission of Enkyoji Buddhist Temple, we have had the opportunity to help so many people. So many people that otherwise may not be able to practice or study by supporting with uh, gohonzons or supporting uh, even with our upcoming pilgrimage. Uh, and in the future, all of us will benefit from the Ofuse. What that means is that, first of all, as an Enkyoji member, you should be a member of a temple. If you are outside of an area, it's important to become an official member of the temple, our Hombu Dojo here in Seattle. That's very important. And that also we understand and show appreciation of, uh, for the teachings. That means uh, even if it is a general uh, monthly donation, just doesn't have to be big, just that small amount of giving that is otherwise you would just have another cup of coffee or something. It's important to have priorities. And I realized how easy it was to give 
for this mission, which is not uh, people making money off. What it is is that it is a mission to be able to spread Buddhism. So therefore, I don't feel any uh, fear to share with people, please uh, give Ofuse to us because we are able to spread the mission. And if you agree with our mission of Ankyoji Buddhist Temple, please contribute to that. It's important that these, uh, and that when you receive teachings, even though you cannot be at a local temple, even though you're not physically going to a temple, it's important to support that temple, to support Ankyoji's mission. And you can do that by making donations, either reoccurring donations or monthly donations, or uh, if you receive some teaching that moves you or and you want to support the mission, you can go to our website at seattlebuddhist.org. And there is a PayPal button. Or you can just mail uh, a donation to our Seattle home Buddha. I'm going to put some information about Ofuse because I think Ofuse is very misunderstood. Uh, I had realized that in my life, uh, as a priest, I gave Ofuse in the form of never complaining. That whenever I had to study, because it was Buddhism, it was the most important thing to me, and it, it's changed my life, that I never complained when I had to take a trip to Japan for my training as a priest. Or, and that was over the course of many, many years. So therefore, uh, if I would have thought that way about comparison, that what is valuable in my life, it finally came down to priorities. And actually, Ofuse is the first of the six paramitas. And you have to ask yourself, why is it the first of the six paramitas? It's because the Buddha says that if you cannot practice Ofuse, the idea of giving without the idea of receipt, for the Dharma, you will not be able to correctly practice Buddhism. Why is this? And I thought about this because, you know, this has been something that has bothered me for a long time. Is that the essence of the paramita of Ofuse, giving the perfection of generosity, giving without the idea of intent. The essence of the paramita is unconditional love. A boundless openness of heart and mind, a selfless generosity and giving which is completely free from attachment and expectation from the very depths of our heart we practice generosity offering our love compassion time energy and resources to serve the highest welfare of all beings giving is one of the essential preliminary steps of our practice our giving should always be unconditional and selfless completely free of any selfish desire for gratitude recognition advantage reputation, or any worldly reward. The perfection of generosity is not only accomplished simply by the action of giving, nor by the actual gift itself. Rather, the true essence of giving is our pure motivation of genuine concern for others, a truly genuine uh, motivation of the awakened heart of compassion, wisdom, and love. So it's not all about just giving money. That's why I said at the beginning, if you hold a meeting, that is practicing Ofuse. I know many of our members are so kind that they're constantly saying, Sensei, you know, I gave my chanting book away. I gave my Juzu away to teach people. But the important thing is, is also understanding other people's mind and understanding what will benefit them. So therefore, Keep and study this concept of Ofuse. And I'm going to Ofuse, and I'm going to bring it up because I want to study it as well. When I bring up these questions, it's something that I'm understanding myself. Generosity is a cure for the afflictions of green, miserliness, and possessiveness. In this practice of giving, we may offer our time, energy, money, food, clothing, or gifts so as to assist others. To the best of our ability, we may offer the priceless treasure of the Lotus Sutra instruction, giving and sharing the explanations of the Buddhist teachings. So, in this year of 2018, let us study the meaning of Ophuse. Let us give 
to the greatest benefit of all beings. Let us show our appreciation, and then we will be able to grow and help other people, because it can't be done without that, unfortunately. I have, you know, when I first studied, uh, when I first started the temple at Enkyoji in Seattle, um, I didn't have enough to eat, but I supported the temple so that the temple could exist. But it was my pleasure. I I never thought about it until I had to sit there and think about um, what I had done for the Dharma as far as Ofuse, because it was natural. And obviously I've dedicated my life to that. Um, so I hope all of you will have this great experience of Ofuse. And Ofuse is all of these three practices that I have here are the idea of Ofuse. Your own practice is Ofuse giving. Uh, allowing others to hear the Dharma or sharing the Dharma is Ofuse. And also giving monetarily is Ofuse as well. Also within that idea of Ofuse, if you do attend a temple, Send, bring flowers, bring fruits, show your appreciation to the Buddha. The Buddha's statue, the Buddha's altar is not a hollow place. It is a place that, like a mirror, it reflects our practice, our study. So therefore, I will hope you do that this year. So re-energize yourself with this idea of giving. So uh, once again, uh, when you become a member of the uh, Seattle and Kyoji uh, Buddhist Temple uh, in, here in Seattle, or the temple that you're uh, a member of in your immediate area, uh, you will be able to get uh, and support this teaching. Um, also, we will be sending out Omamori for our members, so you've already seen the message online, I'm sure. Um, and I want you to go away with a few questions for yourself. First, how will you contribute to the Enkyoji Buddhist Network? Again, we are not a passive organization. We're not an organization that people will just sit around and look at and say, hey, you know, uh, you're doing a good job. No, we're all in this together. Uh, this is our mission. And when you decide to make that mission part of your life, then you are a member of Enkyoji. And I want you to think how this year you will be able to contribute to our Enkyoji mission. What does the mission mean to you? Because that's the most essential thing for it, for us. And if you are unable to attain enlightenment, I am unable to attain enlightenment. And this world itself will always be unsatisfactory. But as you and I have both known, by experiencing the teaching of the Lotus Sutra, we are able to change our lives. And that light, where Buddhism is constantly referred to as the light of the Dharma, reflects in our lives. So therefore, I leave you with this message. Uh, if you have any questions or any concerns, you can call me, email me, any way you can get a hold of me, and uh, let's go forward. All right? Thank you very much.